you've got one on there. I do. He's not a giant, but it is a fish. <laughs> and I mean, this is not a giant, but look at that drop shot rod. <laughs> That type head drop, it's got a tip on it, man, I'll tell you. But it's got plenty of backbone. That's a little 12 inch fish or so. But he was down there. Folks, today we're at Roosevelt Lake and the hardest part about fishing in a certain time of month is usually the full moon. The full moon is during the day, people let it psychologically ruin them and you can still go out and catch fish, you're gonna have certain times of the day that are good, certain times of the day that, that, that aren't so good, but you, you've gotta to try to find some kind of a pattern. I did a lot with uh, top water this morning, tried to get a few quick bites early in the morning when that sun first rises up, and uh, a lot of times that's, that's a good time to try to throw. Uh, and then late in the evening, you know, when that moon starts coming back up, is usually a good time. But during the full moon, I don't let it bother me too much, but I'll tell you, during the day, it can get slow. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I picked up the drop shot and because I know that no matter what happens, no matter how bad the fishing is, I've got enough confidence in that drop shot with that six pound line, get on some of these bluff walls. We're here at the dam area here at Roosevelt Lake and maybe catch a few fish, get us started. We went for a while. We had a couple blow ups on top water, but nothing really to speak of, and maybe they'll start hitting later on in the afternoon. And you don't want a discount having that top water on your, on your deck, because this is the time of year when the nights start getting colder that <clears throat> the fish start wolf packing. And so you, you've got to hit a lot of coves a lot of times to, to catch these fish. But with the full moon, I got a feeling it's a little bit slower today. So I decided I want to catch some fish. I'm going to pull that drop shot out go catch a fish or two, build a little confidence up, and then maybe we'll go back out and, and see if we can catch a couple of big topwater fish or something later. But this is the plan. So I'm gonna pick up my drop shot, and I'm gonna go down and see if we can't catch some fish. Now, Roosevelt has a lot of those little rat bass, but uh, you know, it's still a lot of fun to catch them. Still a lot of fun. This point right here at the dam has a little rock ledge that comes out. You can see it in the water with a good pair of polarized sun sunglasses, but right here where I'm throwing, like right out there is where I can barely see the tip of it and then it drops off into like 25 30 foot of water right there but it has stair steps and what I'm doing is just taking that drop shot throwing it out there letting it fall to the bottom and then picking it up and I'm just kind of drop easily bringing it off that stair step a little bit now I'm gonna give that drop shot that uh, worm a little bit of slack like I'm doing there so the worm has a, t a way of falling real nice and natural like so it's really important to uh, leave the weight on the bottom anytime you're dragging the bait. You're gonna come over some rocks. If you hit some rocks and you get a little hung up, you just kinda pop it over the rock and let it fall back in. But that little stair step there usually holds a fish. It's a good little go-to spot. Things like that, those little stair steps on the points. Cause we're still in the area, uh, or the, we're still in the time of year where these fish could be in a summer pattern and starting to go into a fall pattern. So you're in that in-between stage, you know? Now, one thing that's very important about doing this kind of fishing, and you can tell, the wind is blowing in my face. And so you want to point your boat when you're wanting to worm and uh, throw Texas rigs or drop shots. You want to make sure you're pointing your boat into the wind, and that way you're not going down the bank 100 miles an hour dragging that bait, you know, too fast. So it's very important. <laughs> and make sure you bring plenty of drop shots when you're fishing rocks. But it's always very important to make sure that your boat is facing into the wind if you're worming so you can really work the area. There's a bite. Got it. There's a bite. That's a little bit better fish there. <laughs> right off that ledge. <laughs> Not a giant, but yet again, fishing those ledges. Man, it's hard to get bit. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on, you done. You done. <laughs> he acts like he's, he's 10 pounds. <laughs> Come on. What I've done is I've just, after 
passing through the dam area catching that little, little bass. As tough as the fishing is, it's uh, definitely a drop shotty kind of day right now. And uh, I came alongside this other bluff here and I'm fishing right off. It's really shallow point that comes out and just drops straight off onto a bluff. And they'll get up there and feed or they'll be right on the drop off on that ledge. And uh, so that's what I'm fishing. It's not easy. I'm telling you, it's not easy. It's, uh, it's a little bit tougher. These fish seem to be, seem to be hanging on those drop-offs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep working them and uh, see if I can catch a few more. Then maybe, maybe they'll start moving up and eating here in a little while, but boy, right now, I'm, my boat's sitting in 65 foot of water. You can see where I'm tossing right here, right up against the brush pile and bringing it out and letting it fall a little bit. And that's where I just got bit. So maybe we'll luck out and catch us another one. I'm throwing that uh, Morning Dawn Madness from Arizona Custom Baits. It's an awesome bait when it's real sunny out. The water's not gin clear, but it's, it's a little bit dingy, but it's, this, this bait really looks nice in the water. They can see it good. And, and I'll tell you, a lot of it is I'm just dragging that drop shot on the bottom and just letting it sit there a minute. And then I'll drag it a few more inches, let it sit there a minute. A lot of times it's just, you know, when it's tough like this, you gotta really slow down. I like being on these ledges. Anytime I start feeling like I get spun out this time of year and there, that in-between stage like this, a lot of times you can hit bluffs and man, I'll tell you, they'll, they'll be swimming right along the bluff lines, you know, or get in those shade pockets and catch them. And what I like about this bluff here is you have a little bit of a flat that comes out. This point comes out a little flat point, but yet on where I'm at, it drops right off. You'll be pulling along, filling the rocks, filling the rocks, and then all of a sudden your line just starts taking off. It falls right off that ledge. And a lot of times you let it fall just for a second. They might be right there and grab it. Got him. Oh, monster bass. Monster. Monster. <laughs> Anybody for a little sardines? I got one. There's a little bit better fish there off that ledge. At least he'll be bigger than that last one I just caught. <laughs> little dudes. Is he coming up? Oh yeah, he's a little bit bigger than that last one I just caught. <laughs> like I said, where those little ones are, you'll find a few bigger ones. <laughs> Go from a minnow, throw it right back in there, and you catch his brother. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> oh, he spit my worm out. Those Arizona custom bait worms are really soft. They feel real when they get them. Come on. Come on. Ah, yeah. Little bit better. Drop shot bass. Not a monster, but a little bit better one. <laughs> I'll tell you, when the fishing's tough, those fish like that look like 10 pounds to you. And, and when you're not getting bit that often and you're getting maybe five bites a day, it's like, all right, that's a big fish. <sighs> As I would normally say, not a big fish, but a fun fish. <laughs> right here on these ledges. I still believe, you know, my confident factor for me, even in the wintertime, when the fish aren't biting, I really feel safe throwing against walls. A lot of them have ledges, fish hang off of them. Uh, so in saying that, a lot of times I can go down these bluffy walls with a drop shot or a Cinco, something like that, and, and throw along here and, and catch a few fish, pick up a few, get your confidence built up a little bit. Maybe the bite will start turning on, you know, but with the full moon, getting out here and uh, going behind folks that that aren't catching them and, and catching a few fish, picking up a few, it, it feels good. That would have actually been a decent little keeper. Well, I'm just a big boy, that's the problem. I make my fish look smaller. I don't know what else to say. Here he comes, come on. Ooh, he was down there a ways. They're just down there a little deeper. <laughs> He's swimming right for the boat. <laughs> Not a giant, but he was there. 
All right, come on. You know what we ended up doing? We ended up coming back to this, this bluff over here after letting it rest a while. And that is a good trick, man. When the fishing's tough and you did find an area where you caught a couple, come on. All right, you're done. You're done, come here. Gotcha. He's not as big as that last one, but when you do find an area where you find a couple of them like that, a lot of times you can try a different color worm or, uh, man, he's a little guy, but uh, leave and then come back. You know, we've done that a lot in tournaments where you let a, let a place kind of rest a little bit and they, they get back in their mode of doing what they're doing. Then you come back and, and catch one or two. You leave and then you come back. The other thing really important, I think, that you need to understand that, that you know, people ask me all the time about colors. Well, you know, during the summer, one of the reasons I'm loving this morning dot madness is it's got a red flake in it, you know, and during the summer, I like a little bit of flake in my, in all my worms. Now, during the winter, I'll go with more of a plain type worm, but, you know, ox blood, but I like the red flake if I can get away with that, but that's a beautiful worm. Arizona Custom Baits has made and, and uh, we're catching our fish off it today. Has kind of a shaddy bottom to it and uh, just purple is really good. If I'm fishing for smallmouth, if I'm just straight going for smallmouth, a lot of times I really like like the dark, deep purples uh, and ox blood. Large mouth and small mouth, you can catch them on this too, you know, but there's just certain colors I have that I really like uh, to fish with, it, but there's not a, you know, even though these guys make a ton of great colors and you need to experiment around with a color that works for you. Uh, but you know, it's real simple for me. A lot of times, I'll, if they're if I feel like they're feeding on crawdads, I'm going to go with an oxblood color. If they're feeding up more on shad, I'm going to go with more of the shad colors, the the purples, the 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 clear colors, the things like that, the salt and pepper, and uh, go go that route. Wow! Look at that one. I guess there's only one thing you can say about that. <laughs> They're worth the interruption. <laughs> Keep us safe so we can go fishing. But anyways, I think one of the main things that I love the uh, flake for during the summer is when it's hot and, and uh, you get some of this clear water, that flash really helps and I like that. I like anything with a little flash. It's not something that glistens. I really do like that. Now, if I'm going to be fishing at night, I'll go with more darker colors as well. The ox blood, the black and blues, things like that. So, But I, it's really a handful, I'll be honest with you, of colors that I like to use that I have a lot of confidence in. Not that I don't like trying other colors. It's fun to experiment around. But when, when push comes to shove and you have to catch bass and it's slow like it is today, I'm going to go with some of the colors that I have some confidence with, obviously, because the best lure in your tackle box is the one you have confidence in. That way you fish it slower, you fish it right, and uh, you'll get more bites that way. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important to remember, it didn't happen for us today, but always keep top water on the deck. Because during the summertime, at the end of summer like this, when the nights start cooling down, these bass will start wolf packing. And so you'll be wanting to look back in when you start seeing fish start busting back in the backs of these cuts and that's when you want to start picking up your top water and getting back there and catching some of these fish. That's my tip of the week. Got that one though. That one hit it right as soon as it fell. <laughs> oh yeah. I thought it was a little guy but you're a little bit bigger than just a little guy even though you're a little guy. <laughs> Come on in here buddy. I felt the bite and I'm like, oh man. And I set the hook and nothing happened. And that is one trick that you can really use to your benefit sometimes. Look at that. They're right hanging right off that point on that ledge again. Come on. There we go. Another little drop shot bass. You know what had happened was, and this is a great trick and something to always remember when you're fishing especially with a drop shot you'll feel those little that 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 and it feels like a bluegill and then when you go to set the hook you bring the worm up and the and the weight up and and nothing you, you didn't get anything a lot of times instead of reeling it back up right away if you just let your your uh, weight back drop back down to the bottom 
after you realize you don't have a fish, let it fall back to the bottom. If there was a fish playing with the tail or something, a lot of times when he sees that worm go up and dart back down, he goes and nails it out of a reaction bite. And that's exactly what just happened to me. You know, I felt a little dut 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 and I set the hook, nothing was there. I let the line drop back down and boom, he hit it. I pulled right back up and there he was. So it's a good little trick to do when you're doing this kind of fishing. I know a lot of times we all think, oh, my, my worm's probably all screwed up. It's, it's all bound up on the hook, but it doesn't take nothing to just let it drop one more time just to see if they'll come back and whack it and then, and then bring it back up. You might be able to pull a fish that way. You know, there's no doubt that Roosevelt Lake has gone through a lot of changes over the years. You know, back when I was a kid, you could throw a little darter head four inch power worm, a westy worm, all kinds of different baits, spinner baits, catch them left and right. Since they've introduced those gizzard shad, I think it's made a little bit of a difference. Plus, you know, we got the new dam and everything. And of course, when it's full, it's a lot of fun to fish too. You can get back in the trees on each end of the lake, whether it's the tonneau end or the salt end. But in saying that, the lake's fishing a little bit tougher. It did the, the uh, summer nights uh, that we fished and fished five tournaments. I think we won three. And that was Matt Schur and I that, that did those tournaments. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't easy. We still only ended up with five or six fish a night. It, it wasn't like we were catching them left and right. We just got the right bites. And so, in saying that, sometimes this lake can get a little bit tough. And always remember too, during the summertime, you know, the pH levels come up a little bit. So you might have to find where those fish are lying down there a little bit deeper and try to catch them. But when you get a cloud cover like this and we got a big old thunderstorm fixing to come in, um, it really helps with the pH. And uh, it'll drop that pH a little bit and, and uh, the fish should start biting eventually. And with the full moon today, I'm sure this evening, they'll be biting pretty good. But uh, we've had a lot of fun on the lake today, that's for sure. And, and uh, just because it's been beautiful, it ain't because the fishing's been great, that's for sure. But you know, you can go pick yourself up some drop shots, pick yourself up some drop shot hooks. And uh, Arizona Custom Baits has a wide variety of beautiful colors of their worms. This one here is Morning Dawn Madness. The one reason I love this bait during the summer is because of the flake, but not just because of that reason, but I can generally take this bait to Lake Pleasant, Apache, Saguaro, Canyon, and catch fish on it on a regular basis. Same thing with the Oxblood Red Flake. Those are probably my two favorite colors when I have to throw these kind of worms. Check them out, you'll catch a lot of fish. They're soft, they hold on to them, so be careful, they'll swallow these baits. We've had a great time on the water. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>